الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين حياكم الله ومرحبا بكم my noble brothers and sisters in the city of Ottawa it's a pleasure and I'm very humbled to be here with all of you guys and to see lots of young faces it's something that the heart really gets happy at and the topic that was chosen it's a very beautiful topic and sins and as we know sins then is one of the worst things that a Muslim could do. And dhunub and sins, then they have different darajat. They have different levels. And our noble brother, Shaykh Muhammad Hassan, he talked about sins and how to stop them. My lecture, bi ta'ala, I'm gonna talk about athar al dhunub wal ma'asi al al-abd. Oh, al al-qalb. The effects that sins have on a servant, an individual or the effects of sins that has on the heart. And this is very important. As we know, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and he said in uh, authentic hadith, he said, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَى إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ That verily there is a flesh in the body, and if this flesh is upright and straight, then the whole body will be upright and straight. Meaning if this piece of flesh is alive, then the whole body will be alive. Meaning the a'mal, the actions of the body will be alive when the abd, the servant is praying their salah, when they're giving their zakat and so on. But if this piece of flesh is dead and it's not breathing and it's not alive, then the whole body will be like that. And the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, verily this is this is a heart. This is the heart. So reminders like this and topics like this is very important for an individual, especially very important for a human, especially very important for a Muslim, whether they're old or whether they're young or whether what nationalities they come from and so on. Our topic today, inshallah, we're going to break it down in different sections. It's a long topic, but we're going to try to summarize it ta'ala, due to the time that we have. The first part of it is going to be, what is Islam? And the reason why we're going to start off with that is, why are we leaving off these sins and these ma'asi and these dhunub? The reason why we're leaving it off is because we're Muslims. We believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in the We believe in the Jannah. We believe in the messengers, we believe in the malaika, we believe in the yawm al-akhirah, we're Muslims. And we want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to enter al-firdus. So we have to know what Islam is to stay away from these dunub. And our Islam and our tawheed is what we push and we strive for to stay away from the ma'asi dunub. The second section is going to be the levels and the darajat of the sins. The levels of the sins and what sins are more worse than others. The third one is going to be how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interacts and deals with the servant is in accordance to the servant's actions. Is in accordance to the servant's actions. The last one that we're going to finish off with is athar al dhunub Speaking of some of the effects of shins that Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentioned bi-idnillahi ta'ala. So the first one is, what is Islam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Qur'an, inna deena inda Allah al-Islam. For verily the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Islam. The meaning of al-Islam, my noble brothers and sisters, is huwa al-istislamu lillahi bil-tawheedi wa l-inqiyadu lahu bil-ta'ah wa al-baraatu min al-shirki wa ahli. Then the meaning of Islam is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His tawheed, with His oneness, meaning His lordship and his worship and his names and attributes. 
and it's also to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise to free yourself from shirk, from associating partners and rivals alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also for freeing yourself from the people of shirk, from the people of shirk. And this is the religion of Al-Islam, the definition of it. And this is something that is obligatory for all of us, for all of us. The topic is ma'asi wa dhunub. And in the religion of Islam, then there is sins and the sins are not equal. They're not all on the same level. From the highest sin that an individual could commit is shirk al-akbar, which is the major shirk or the greater shirk. After that is shirk al-asghar, which a lot of people call the minor shirk, but I don't like calling it the minor shirk because if one translates it to the minor shirk, then they will belittle it. So we will call it the lesser shirk, the lesser shirk. Then after that is bid'ah, innovations. Bid'ah. Then after that is kaba'ir al dhunub major sins. And at times kaba'ir al dhunub could be bigger than certain bid'ah. And at times bid'ah could be bigger than kaba'ir al dhunub as the ulama mentioned. And kaba'ir al dhunub the major sins, as we all know, for example, is qatl nafs one killing an individual. Likewise is zina, likewise is riba, likewise is drinking alcohol, wa Then after the kaba'ir al dhunub the major sins is what is Less than that. What is less than that? So we spoke about these sins and we spoke about the level. And the first one is shirk. Shirk. Shirk al Akbar. And what is shirk? Shirk is to associate partners and rivals alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the greatest crime that an individual could do. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you, Ya Abdullah. And you come with that shirk over here, Ya Allah, then this is the greatest crime that an individual could do to associate partners and rivals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his rububiyyah, his uluhiyya, and his asma wa sifat, his lordship, his worship, and his names and attributes. Why is shirk so dangerous and why is it the major sin? Then the reason why it is so dangerous and why it is the major sin is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah la yaghfir wa yushraka bih. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَٰلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not forgive those who associate and ascribe partners and rivals alongside Him. But He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgives what is lesser than that. He forgives what is lesser than that. So we see why it is so dangerous. And earlier as we mentioned, the first of the biggest sins that one could do is shirk al-akbar. We said the second one is shirk al-asghar. So now we understand the shirk has two categories. It has two categories. So what is the difference between the two categories, al-akbar and al-asr? The major shirk, the reason why it is the most dangerous one is because it takes one out of the fold of Islam. يُخْرِجُ الْمَرْءُ عَلَى الدِّينِ Islam. It takes one out of the fold of Islam. Meaning that this person over here, if they don't repent to it, then they will not enter Jannah. This person over here, then their a'mal will not be put on the mizan, their deeds will not be put on the scale. Meaning that this person over here, then there is no salah prayed upon him. This person over here is not a Muslim. And it's the worst one that one could do. The one that is lesser than that shirk, al-asghar, but it is still big. Then this over here, for example, is one swearing by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By one saying, I swear by the Kaaba, for example. By one, say, I swear by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. for example, then this is the lesser shirk. But it could turn to higher shirk if you believe what you are swearing by is greater. If you believe that the Kaaba is greater or equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or likewise, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam is greater or equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this is, turns to shirk al akwa Likewise, the lesser shirk example of it is showing off in acts of ibadah, showing off a riya, showing off in acts of Worship. That is shirk al asr My brothers and sisters in Islam, then this over here is the worst thing that one could do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Then don't associate partners and rivals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you know, while you know. Taib, an important mas'ala that people will always wonder is, we know the one who commits shirk al-akbar will not be forgiven. 
Meaning if they die in that state and they do not make tawbah, they will not be forgiven. What happens to the one who dies upon the lesser shirk, shirk al-asghar, and they do not make tawbah? Will they be forgiven or will they not be forgiven? This is a big mas'ala that the ulama of Islam, the ulama of Ahl sunnah then they spoke about it and they differed in it. Then the first group of the scholars in this over here, they say that the individual who dies upon this over here, then they will not be forgiven. Rather, this individual over here will be placed upon a scale. Their deeds will be placed upon a scale. And if his good deeds outweigh his bad deeds, then he will enter Jannah. And if his old deeds outweigh his good deeds, then he will enter the hellfire. And the proof to use for this over here is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَيُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ But verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not forgive those who associate and ascribe partners and rivals with Him, but He forgives what is less than that. The second group of scholars, they say that this individual over here will be تحت المشيئة الله. This individual over here will be under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, He will forgive this individual. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, then He will punish this individual from His jest, from His adl, from His jest. And the proof that they use, they say that majority of the ayat in the Quran that speak about shirk, then they are talking about shirk al akbar, the major shirk. And they use the example of the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ جَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ نَارِ Then whoever who sets up partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah has forbidden paradise for him. And in hellfire will be his home. Hellfire will be his home and abode. The second proof that they use is that they say that shirk al-akbar and shirk al-asghar is different. It's different. The reason why it's different is because shirk al-akbar the one who does this and dies upon this and doesn't make tawbah and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say this person over here has left the fold of Islam. Compared to Al-Asghar, Al-Asghar as we said, it does not take one out of the fold of Islam. So the person is a Muslim still, but they are committing a big sin. Likewise, they said the one who dies upon shirk, Al-Akbar, will not enter Jannah. And the one who dies upon shirk, Al-Akbar, then their scales, their deeds will not be weighed. And likewise, they say, while the one who dies on shirk al-asghar's deeds will be scaled, then the scholars, they all agree on this. All the scholars agree that the one who dies upon the lesser shirk, that their deeds will be scaled. Tayyib. Why did I mention this? The reason why I mentioned this, my noble brothers and sisters, is because shirk is from the highest of all sins and vulub that an individual could do. That an individual could that's why I mentioned it and I showed you what the ulama of Ahl Sunnah will jama'a say. So you Muslim, you young Muslim or old Muslim, you male Muslim or female Muslim, then could be careful. Could be careful that you stay away from this. And every single prophet and messenger, then they warn their community to stay away from this. To stay away from this. Before we get into the second part, then... We're going to read a few statements from Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, where he's talking about sins and ghanub, and he said, فَمِمَّا يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يُعْلَمْ From what one should know and be aware at is أَنَّ الذُّنُوبُ وَالْمَعَاسِ تَضُرُّ وَلَا بُدْ That sins and disobedience definitely causes harms. It causes harms. وَأَنَّ ضَرَرَهَا فِي الْقَلْبِ كَالْضَرَرِ السُّمُومِ فِي الْأَبْدَانِ And the harmful effects that sins and disobedience has on the heart is like a poison upon the body. However, they are not all on the same level. Some are higher than others, some are worse than others, like we mentioned. And then pay attention to this. Shaykh Ibn Qayyim he said, وَهَلْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ شَرٌّ وَدَاءٌ إِلَّا وَسَبَبُهُ ذُنُوبُ وَالْمَعَاسِ Is there in the world is there in the worldly life and the hereafter evil and sickness except that its cause is due to sinning and disobedience? Allahu Akbar. If one ponders upon that over there, then they will know whatever they are child in in this life over here. They will look and the first thing they will do is they will question themselves. How is my alaqa? How is my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
they will look at themselves. They will not question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr. Do not ask why is this happening to me. Rather, they will see what their alaqa and their connections with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. When it comes to adhunub and sins, the one should not belittle the big or the little sins. Or the little sins. Some people will just say, it's just a small sin, brother. Or it's just a small sin, sister. Let, let, let me go. It's just a small sin. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, who was Khadim Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was the caretaker of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He stayed with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 10 years. And he lived a long life after the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas radiallahu anhu, he was advising the tabi'een after the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was advising the students of the Sahaba. And he said, you indulge in such actions that are less significant in your eyes than a piece of hair. While we used to consider them destructive sins during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad He said, you indulge yourself in actions that are less significant than a piece of hair. Think of a piece of hair that you have. Think of a piece of hair, how little it is that if it falls on the ground, you will not be able to see it. He said, you indulge yourself with things less significant than a piece of hair. While we, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi we used to look at these things to be destructive. To be destructive. Anas, radiallahu anhu, who was he telling this to? He was telling this to the tabi'een. From the Qurun al-Mufaddala, from the best generations. Taib, how about our generations? How about us now? Whereupon we'll say, it's just a small sin. Let them be. They're not doing nothing wrong. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said, Al-Ma'asi Barid al Kufr. That he said that some of the Salaf, they used to say the pious predecessors, they used to say that sin leads to disbelief. Sin leads to disbelief. And Haqqan, truthfully, he's right. Sin, it leads to disbelief. It will start with something little till it enters something big. And is it similar to how kissing leads to intercourse? How kissing leads to intercourse? One may look at kissing to be. Little. But what is that kissing going to lead to? It's going to lead to something bigger. It's going to lead to something greater. It's going to lead to something more, worse, where it's going to lead to complete intercourse. And likewise, he said, وَالْغِنَا بَرِيدُ الزِّنَا And that, that music leads to zina. The music leads to zina. And we see this. Usually people who are indulged in music, then eventually what does it lead to? It leads to Zina over here. Some people will listen to music to make them feel better and to go commit acts of evilness. Some will do it to go impress a female, while others you will see they'll listen to music to go do what? When they're going to go kill somebody. billah. You'll see young Muslims and non-Muslims, they'll be listening to specific types of songs while they're going to go do what? Harm somebody. So you see that there's Ghina over here with this music over here, then it is bad and it is filthy. And he said that looking leads to loving. Meaning looking at a female could lead to committing something that is worse. A female that is haram for you could look be something that is worse. And likewise he said, marid الْمَوْتِ And that sickness leads to death. The sickness leads to death. Why? Because usually you're going to be a bit sick. Majority of people, they will be sick and it will lead to that death. But what is the first thing he started off with? He started off with, uh, he started off with, الذنوب المعاسي بريد الكفر. The sins lead to disbelief. And the ending that he went to, والمريد بريد الموت. And that sickness leads to death. It all started off with what? The sins, the sins, it all started off with. Some of the people of before, they used to say, لا تنظر إلى الصغر الخطيئة ولكن انظر إلى من عصيت. Then don't look at the smallness or the significant, insignificant of a sin, but rather look at who you are disobeying. Meaning, one should ponder and should think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are sinning. As the poet said, إِنَّ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الظَّلَامَ يَرَانِي 
Inna For verily the one who created the darkness sees me. For verily the one who created the darkness sees me. Meaning now when one is all alone and they are sinning and committing an evil act, what should this individual do? No one can see them. Their parents cannot see them. Their friends cannot see them. They're, if they're put in a position to be a da'i, their students cannot see them. Their wives cannot see them if they're married. Their kids cannot see them, so on. But who sees them? Who are they disobeying? They're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created you, the one who provides for you. So one should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sees them. He sees them. Really, if people cannot see you when you are hidden and secluded, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sees you, Ya Abdullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sees you, Ya Amatullah, when you are committing that sin. For they live in Iyad, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. Then he said, Verily when I sin, فَأَرَى ذَلِكَ فِي خُلُقِ الذَّابَةِ وَمْرَأَةِ Verily when I sin, I see it. I see the effects of it in my riding beast. And I see the effects of it in my wife. Meaning maybe his riding beast, that horse that he had, or that camel that he's riding would be difficult for him to ride. And also, what does he see it in? He sees it in his wife. Maybe his wife at that time would not listen to what he's saying. How many of us today when our cars, something goes wrong with it, for example, we don't look and we don't see what we have done. Or if the brothers are married and an issue happens between them and their spouse, then the first thing that they say is what? My wife, she's not a good wife. My wife, she's not listening to me. My wife, she's not cooking for me. My wife, she's not cleaning for me, wa They will complain, but they're not seeing that their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not good. They're not questioning themselves. That maybe this over here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing you. This over here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trialing you. And this over here is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But these pious generation, these men and women from the Salaf, then what did they used to do? They used to question themselves. My brothers and sisters, they used to question themselves. Sins, brothers and sisters, it destroys nations. How many nations have we seen previously before us that got destroyed and wiped away because of the noob that they have done? But a lot of us, we don't take this as a hibra. We don't pay attention to this. Brothers and sisters, when Cyprus was conquered and the Fatuh of Cyprus, the opening of Cyprus happened and it happened in roughly the 28th year of Hijri, in the time of Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu. Then when the Muslims opened it, the great Sahabi Abu Darda, he was amongst the Muslims over there. So when they opened it, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he started to cry, he started to cry. And he said, what is wrong with you, Ya Abu Darda? We opened Cyprus. This is a great opening. We, we defeated these people and we opened it. Why are you crying? And he said, look how insignificant a servant is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they leave his ibadah. Then these people over here, they were strong. They were a strong nation. But what were they doing? They were disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was shirk. It was kufr. They were disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? He wiped them away. The faham and the fiqh of this great sahaba, the understanding of this great sahaba radiallahu anhu then was a very strong understanding. Because he was crying and he was taking an example of this. That no matter how strong a nation is or a group of people are, when they leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they leave the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or when they bring the dhunub, they are insignificant. They are insignificant. Brothers and sisters, that we should ponder what ousted our father Adam alayhi salam from paradise. What was the cause that Iblis La'anatullah was kicked out of Jannah. What was the reason why the people of Nuh alayhi salam were drowned with water until the water reached high on top of the mountain? What was the reason why the people of Ad were punished? What was the cause of the people of Sha'ib to be punished? What was the reason why Fir'aun was punished? All of this over here was due to Adhanu. All of this over here was due to sins. Brothers and sisters, 
as we are aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He deals and interacts with His servants in accordance to their a'mal, in accordance to their actions, in accordance to their actions. And as we know, when it comes to actions, and there's good actions that one could do, and there's bad actions that one could do. As for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey His commands and stay away from disobeying Him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them barakat, He gives them blessing. He gives this individual blessing from the heaven. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives this individual blessing in this world over here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَتَقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذَنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And if only the people of the Qura, meaning the people of the cities, had believed and feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would have opened for them blessings from the heaven and likewise from the earth. But they denied the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning they denied what the messengers were calling them to, the tuhid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we seized them from what they were earning. We seized them from what they were earning. Ibn al-Qayyim, uh, Ibn Kathir, may Allah have mercy on him, when he was explaining this tafsir over here, he said, if their hearts believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if their hearts believed in what the messengers brought, meaning believe, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if they were truthful in following them, and if they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if they stayed away from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given them? لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have opened from them blessings from the heaven, from Jannah, and likewise the earth. And the blessings is what? قَطَرَ السَّمَاءِ وَنَبَاتِ الْأَرْضِ Rain coming down from the heaven and vegetation, vegetation from the earth. This is what they would have gotten. But what did they do? وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذَنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ But they denied the messengers. They denied what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to call them to. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them in return? So we seize from them what they were earning. We seize from them what they were earning. وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا رُسُلُهُمْ فَعَقَبَنَاهُمْ بِالْحَلَاكِ عَلَى مَا كَسَبُوا مِنَ الْمَآثِمُ وَالْمَحَارِمُ But they denied their messengers, so we punished them with destructions for their sins and forbidden things that they had committed. All of this would happen. They committed sins. But if the people of the Qura, of that town and that village, believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly should have been feared, then what would they have gotten? They would have gotten the barakat, the blessings, coming from where? Min as ard coming from the heavens and from the earth, from the earth. And you see so many times, lots of countries where it will not rain. It will not rain. And lots of brothers will notice who were in these specific countries. Maybe it will rain one time a year. Maybe it will rain two times a year. But nobody looks and reflects that this over here could be due to the actions that they are doing, due to the sins that they are doing. Something we need to understand when it comes to al and Al-Mahasi is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yadlamu ahad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, He does not oppress anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah la yadlamu al-nasa shay'a, walakinna al-nasa anfusahum yadlamun. For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not wrong the people at all, but it's the people who wrong themselves. It is the people who wrong themselves. So it's important that the person looks and reflects upon themselves in whatever they are going through in this life over here. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا أَخْطَأَ خَطِيئَةً نُكِتَتْ فِي قَلْبِهِ نُكْتَةٌ سَوْدَى Verily, when a servant commits a sin, a black spot appears in his heart. فَإِذَا هُوَ نَزَحْ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ وَتَابَ سُقِلَ قَلْبُهُ and if this individual over here feels remorse, 
And this individual over here seeks forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this individual over here repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it will be wiped out. And if he continues upon this over here, then it will increase until his heart, it gets covered. And the Prophet Muhammad continued, he said, هُوَ الرَّانُ الَّذِي ذَكَرَ اللَّهِ كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Then this is the stain and the rust that covers the heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his statement, nay, but on their hearts is ran, meaning covering of sins and evil deeds which they used to earn. It's hadith of Yaswa in Sunnah Tirmidhi. It's hadith of Yaswa in Ibn Majah and so on. So it shows us that every time the abd commits a sin, then that spot happens. They get that black spot in their qalb. But when the abd makes tawbah and feels remorseful and repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happens? It goes away. When zada ala dhalika, then if the abd comes back and continues to it, what happens? Then it comes and completely covers his heart. It comes and completely covers up. Hassan al-Basri, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then when it was asked him, ma ma'ana ran ma hu ran what does ran mean? He said, it is sin upon sin until the heart is completely blinded. It, it is sin upon sin until the heart is completely blinded. Now we're going to go to what is the effects of the sin over here. Athar al what is the effects of sin? Then Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him. The first effect of sin that he spoke about is Harman al ilm is prevention of knowledge. One being prevented from knowledge, meaning a barrier gets put in front of the individual and the knowledge that they want to see. But what knowledge are we talking about? Are we talking about the secular knowledge? Are we talking about unbeneficial knowledge? No, we're talking about Islamic knowledge. Knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowledge of his messenger, knowledge that of the Sahaba, what they used to say, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what the Sahaba, what the Prophet sallallahu says, what the Sahaba say, why? Because they know best. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that every day at Fajr, when he used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, he used to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a, وَرِسْقًا طَيِّبًا وَعَمَّلًا مُتَقَبَّلًا Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you for beneficial knowledge. So we understand that all knowledge is beneficial. And oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you for sustenance that is good. And oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you for actions, deeds that are accepted. What do all of this start off with? علم النافع علم النافع Beneficial knowledge. اللهم إني أسألك علم النافع Beneficial knowledge. Why? Because if you have that beneficial knowledge, then you will know how to get that sustenance that is pure and right and is halal. Rizqan tayyibah, the halal risk. And likewise, if you have that ilm and nafi', then you will know which a'mal actions are accepted by Allah and which actions are not accepted by Allah. Knowledge, as the people of before used to say, is nurun yaqdifuhu Allahu fil qalb. Knowledge is a light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instills in one's heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instills that light in one's heart. What takes away that nur? What takes away that nur is sins and al-mahasi. wal tutfi'u dhalika nur And sin, then it takes away that light. Disobedience, then it extinguishes that light. It extinguishes that light, the knowledge that the abd had. Imam Malik rahimahullah was... Imam of Ahl al Madina. Then Imam Malik rahimahullah, he met a young student who came to him. And the student of yours, Muhammad ibn Idris Shafi'i. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with both of them. And he's seen the knowledge of Imam Shafi'i. Imam Shafi'i, it was said that he recited the Muatta, Imam Malik's famous book of Muatta, he recited it from his head to Imam Malik. So Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, he had a very strong memorization, a very strong understanding of the religion, where he became a faqih, where he became a usuli, where he was the first one to play some of the terminologies of mustalah hadith in his famous book, Al-Risala, in Usul al-Fiqh, he was a lughawi and so on. Where the, the scholars of Usul al-Fiqh, they say a shafi, he was 
a hujjah when it came to Lugha. It was a proof that could be used when it came to Lugha. So when Imam Malik, Rahimahullah, he seen the knowledge of this young child of you, he said, Inni ara Allah qad alqa ala qalbika nur. Verily, I see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled in your heart light. Then don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تُطْفِئُوا بِظُلْمَةِ الْمَحْسِيَةِ Then don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because this sin over here will extinguish that light. Will extinguish that light. This was who? A scholar telling this to another scholar. Now imagine us. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, it said that one day he seen a woman that was walking by and his eye fell to her ankle. And she had some bracelets on her ankle. And he Shafi'i had a strong memory as we said. Then he Shafi'i, he forgot. He forgot and he went to his Shaykh Waqiyah ibn Jarrah, who was a scholar. He went to him complaining that he forgot. A lot, a, lot, a lot of us, if our eyes fall on something like that, we will look and we will see it's something very little. It's something very little. Then Waqi'i, he replied back to Shafi'i. Shafi'i said in his poems, he said, شَكَوْتُ إِلَىٰ وَقِيعٍ سُوَى حِفْتِ فَأَرْشَدَنِ إِلَىٰ تَرْكِ الْمَعَاسِ وَقَالَ إِعْلَمْ بِأَنَّ عِلْمَ فَضْلٌ وَفَضْلُ اللَّهِ لَا يُؤْتَاهَ عَاسٍ He said that I went to Al-Waqi'i, Ibn Jarrah, his sheikh, and I complained to him about bad memory. Meaning that my memory has decreased and has went down. Then he said, Al-Waqi' he directed me to leave off sins. He directed me to leave off sins. And he said, knowledge is a great blessing. And verily this blessing over here is not given to the sinner. Verily this blessing over here is not given to a sinner. What did Shafi'i fall into? What he fell into, Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, is his eyes fall on a woman's ankle. Tayy. How about today? People are on social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, YouTube, looking at all this haram stuff they're not supposed to be looking at. Then when they do not get that knowledge, the ilm and nafa that they want, they start saying, maybe it's my sheikh, my teacher, he didn't teach me. Maybe it's the book that the sheikh is teaching me. If they're learning a, a small book with the sheikh, Maybe they're learning usul al talat and they didn't understand talat al usul properly. Then they say, maybe there's this khalal, this problem with this book over here. I'm going to go to kitab al tawheed They're going to go to a bigger book. But they didn't understand talat al usul They're going to question everything except what they're doing every day with, with this, this jawal over here, this phone. This phone over here could be a blessing. And at the same time, this phone over here could be a curse. It depends how the individual uses it. The individual at times wants to sit down and listen to the durus of the ulama. Shaykh Uthaymin, rahimahullah, you can go through books and books of what he explained, recorded. Shaykh Anna Shaykh Abdul Razak, hafidullah, you can go through books of all that he recorded and you could benefit from it with your, with your phone. But likewise, others, they could do opposite. They could go on the Instagram and look at stuff they're not supposed to look at. They could go on Snapchat, they could go on Netflix and so on. But then, when they notice a decrease in their knowledge and their ilm and nafi, what do they do? They question everything except the actions that they are doing. The second effect of sins is harman al risk. Prevention from risk. Meaning prevention from getting the proper sustenance. The risk, the sustenance over here, provision over here, who does it come from? It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al razaq comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives it to whoever He wills. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, in al abda la yuhramu al-rizqa bi dhambi yusibuhu. That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He deprives or may deprive a person of a blessing because of a sin that He committed. A blessing that you were going to get, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he took it away from you. Why? Because of a sin that you may do. Then it's important that the abd, they stay away from a dhunub. They stay away from a sin. And this sin over here, can, this, this uh, risk over here, sustenance, and it could be of all types. Sustenance over here could be one's food or one's clothing. Maham, it could also be if one 
wants to go get married. A young male wants to go get married. But due to the sins he is doing in this marriage over here, it's become difficult for him. He tells me for four years, five years, six years, seven, eight years, I've been looking to get married. But I can't find the right spouse. There's always something wrong with the sisters. But this individual is not looking at themselves. But maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this from them due to the sin that they are doing. Likewise for the sisters as well too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Then whoever who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds a way out from him in every single difficulty. وَيَرْزِقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide from him in sources that this individual could never imagine. Why? Because this person over here then, they had the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَن يَتَوَكَلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ and the one who puts all his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for him. This person over here for the risk to get it, and they brought the proper a'mal, they brought the proper asbab, the proper means for it. And from the highest proper means and asbab of this over here is a taqwa. Taqwa. Some people will say taqwa is fear, some people will say taqwa is piety. Inshallah, we'll explain what taqwa is. But this taqwa over here is, comes from the qalb. Comes from the qalb. Of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a taqwa ha huna. And he pointed in his heart. So it comes from the qalb. Talq ibn Habib, rahimahullah, was from the tabi. Then some individuals, they came to him. And I want you brothers and sisters to ponder the people of before, when they used to go to the people of knowledge, the square, the scholars, they used to ask them beneficial knowledge. Do not ask them stuff that does not benefit them. Don't ask them things that benefit them in their deen. Things that bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's always important for us when it comes to our deen. And we're asking Ahl al-ilm, the scholars, questions. We're asking them things that bring us close to Allah. Allah. Bring us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said, Sif lana taqwa. Describe to us what a taqwa is. And he said, العمل بطاعة الله على نور من الله وجاء ثواب الله وترك معص الله على نور من الله مخافة عذاب الله. He said that this taqwa over here is that an individual, the abd, fulfills the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa taala with proper insight, meaning with proper ilm, knowledge, and adilla proofs, hoping from that to earn the reward of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they stay away from disobedience meaning they stay away from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with clear insight meaning with clear knowledge they stay away from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what taqwa is a lot of times one will say taqwa is fear taqwa is piety but this over here is taqwa this over here is taqwa and these individuals for their sustenance to get accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for them to receive the sustenance, then they bring a'mal and asbab, actions and paths that will help them attain this over here. طيب. The third effect that a sin will have on an individual, the human, is al-ma'siyyatu turithu dhul. That the sin over here it increases humiliation for an individual. Verily, brothers and sisters, all honor is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةَ فَلِلَّهِ عِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا If one desires honor, power and glory, then to Allah belong all honor, power and glory. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, may Allah have mercy on him. Then he spoke about sins and he said, رَأَيْتُ ذُنُوبَ تُمِيتُ الْقُلُوبَ وَقَدْ يُورِثُ ذُلَّ إِذْنَانُهَا وَتَرْكُ ذُنُوبِ حَيَاتُ الْقُلُوبِ وَخَيْرُ لِنَفْسِكَ عِسْيَانُهَا He said, I have seen the sins bring death to the hearts. رَأَيْتُ ذُنُوبَ تُمِيتُ الْقُلُوبَ I have seen, seen sins, ذُنُوب, they bring death to the hearts. And verily humiliation results from being addicted to those sins. Humiliation results from being addicted to those sins that you commit. And he said that leaving off sins brings life to the heart, 
وترك القلوب حياة القلوب Leaving off these sins over here, it brings haya, it brings life, and it brings joy to the qalb. And that it is best for you, for your nafs, that you disobey it. Why? Because if we all listen to our nafs, and we all listen to our de- desires, what are we going to do? We're going to run and we're going to go do crazy things. If every single Muslim listens to their nafs, what are they going to do? So it's best when your nafs desires something that is haram, and what do you do? You leave it. You leave it and you disobey your own nafs. You don't obey it. Because obeying it is going to cause what? To disobey Ar-Rahman. To disobey Ar-Rahman. And this is the best example. And verily you will see one who is consistently sinning and they will be humiliated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will humiliate this individual amongst the people in the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate this individual over here in amongst to the people in the earth. طيب, the first, fourth point that sins bring is المعاصي تفسد العقل That the sins, it corrupts one's intelligence. It corrupts one's intelligence. Ibn al-Qayyim said أن المعاصي تفسد العقل فإن للعقل نور والمعصية تطفئ النور he said that the sins corrupts one's intelligence. For verily the aql, intelligence, it has in it a light. It has in it a nur. And this sin over here, it will extinguish this light over here. Verily this ma'asiyah, this sin that an individual does, then it will definitely, definitely extinguish the knowledge in the aql, the intelligence. It will definitely extinguish it. And verily, if the light in the aql has been extinguished, then this individual here, this individual is going to become weaker and his intelligence is going to come smaller and smaller. Some of the Salaf, then they used to say, مَا عَاصَ اللَّهَ أَحَدٌ حَتَّى يَغِيبَ عَقْلٌ Then none will disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until his mind will be lost. Meaning one who continuously goes and disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his mind will be gone. His mind will be gone. Some of the Salaf, they used to also say, being a jahil is a description of one who sins. One who sins. Why? Because this person over here is an ignorant person. They are sinning. Meaning if the person over here now was a smart person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with a strong aql and they take it for granted and they go and commit lots of dhulub, then their aql comes weaker. Then this over here, person over here becomes the opposite to the knowledge they have. They become a jahil. They become a jahil. Why? Due to the sins that they are doing. طيب, the fifth point about sins, what sins does. Then Ibn al-Qayyim said, الْوَحْشَةُ الَّتِي تَحْصُلُ لَهُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ النَّاسِ That loneliness that one finds between him and the people. وَلَا سِيَمَا أَهْلُ الْخَيْرِ مِنْهُ Especially Loneliness he's going to find with who? وَلَا سِيَمَا أَهْلُ الْخَيْرِ مِنْهُمْ Especially loneliness he's going to find with Ahlul Khayr, the people of good. The people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this individual over here, he's going to find loneliness first with what? Within himself. You'll see the individual is going to be depressed. He's going to go through depression. He's going to go through sadness and grieves being by himself. This is what this sin is going to do. It's going to seclude him. But who is he going to seclude him from? It's going to seclude him from Ahl al Khayr. The brothers who run to the first row of the masjid. The brothers who fast on Mondays and Thursdays. The brothers who come get together in Durus. The brothers who come together, come together to learn hadith and Quran. Then this individual, if he was from them, continues to sin. His sin is going to make him lonely from being with them. 
He's going to seclude himself from them. He's not going to want to be amongst them. And where is he going to lead him to? To go to Ahl al-Fujur. To go to the people who are bad and the people who are open sinners. And as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Al-Mar'u ala deen khalil. Verily, the individual is upon the religion of his friend. Meaning if your friend, someone who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goes to the masjid, then you will most likely be following your friend. If your friend is outside and he's a drug dealer or he's selling alcohol or she's an escort, what is going to happen? Then you fall, uh, slowly maybe will fall into that or likely to be around that, which is not good, which is not good. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Al arwahu junudul mujannada. For verily the hearts, they are like soldiers. The souls are like soldiers that attract one another. They attract one another. So the good ones, they attract each other. The bad one is not going to attract the good one. It's not going to attract the good one. So this individual over here, what happens? A loneliness happens to himself from the people of good. I don't want to be with those brothers. They're boring. All they're doing is, is, is they're learning. Or they're memorizing a hadith. They memorize the and No, we, I don't want to do that. All practicing people, they do this. All practicing people, they do that. All they're boring. All they do is this and that. This is what happened. The sin they're doing, it pushed them away from the khayr. It pushed them away from the khayr. The sixth point is that the effects of the sin is it reduces one lifespan. It reduces one's lifespan. And the ulama say, just like doing khayr, and for example, keeping the silat al-rahim, keeping close ties with your family members, increases the lifespan. They say that al-ma'asi and sin, it decreases one's lifespan. And they also say that it decreases one's barakah. It decreases one's blessing. An individual maybe had a small job, and in the job that the individual had, they were not making lots of money. They're making their own money. But this individual over here is a taqi. The one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has a taqwa. With the little money and income they're making, alhamdulillah, it suffices them. They pay what they need to pay and they're okay and satisfied. Then it could be an individual who has five figures, five figures, six figures, seven figures. They have lots of money. But what are they? They're one who disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't know where their money is going. At the end of the month, they don't know where their money is going. They're in debt, day in after day, in debt after debt after debt after debt after debt. There's no barakah in their money. Due to what? Due to the sins that they are committing. An individual could go and buy a brand new car, but they start seeing problems coming with that car and so on. Meaning the barakah, the blessings that they get, they start seeing issues. They start seeing issues. Due to the sins that they are committing. The last part we're going to finish off with, my brothers and sisters, is the effects of Adnub. And this is not from Ibn al Qayyim, now we stop at Ibn al Qayyim. The effects of sins, then it makes the sinner not worry about death. It makes the sinner not think about death. Why? Because they are so caught up and they're so tied in this dunya that they don't want to hear that it's going to end. They enjoy what they're doing, they don't want to hear this dunya is going to end. Compared to who? Compared to the one who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way he should be believed in. And the one who comes and watches themselves when they sin. If they sin, they make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they always try to do good actions and good deeds. And this individual over here, what's always in their mind? What's always in their mind is death. If I die, where am I going to go? They're always thinking about death compared to the sinner. And as we know, brothers and sisters, then Prophet Muhammad said, then remember death a lot, the destroyer of pleasures. Remember the destroyer of pleasures. And we know that death, then there is no running and there is no hiding from it. Wherever you are, then death will meet you. Death will overtake you. Even if you are in high towers, High towers, wherever you are, when it's your time to die, then death will meet you. Then this death over here from which you flee, 
indeed it will meet you indeed it will meet you thumma turaduna ila alim al ghaib wa shahada then you will be brought return to the knower of the unseen and the witness you will be brought to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa yunabbiukum bima kuntum ta'malun and he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will inform you of what you used to do in this dunya so the one who is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they're always pondering upon these ayats and they're always pondering upon this death over here they're always pondering about it yes they're bringing the a'mal or they're trying to do the actions they're supposed to do to the best of their ability they're praying the qiyam al layl they're giving their sadaqah they're memorizing the quran they're they're greeting one another with the salam but at the same time these ayat over here they are pondering over it because they know that a time will come where they will leave this dunya over here and they don't know what their situation is going to be when they leave this dunya over here kalla ila balaghati taraqi and when the soul has reached the collarbone waqila man raq and the people will say get someone to cure this individual go get a raqi to come in read quran on him take this individual over here to the hospital but the individual who's dying what do they know they know they know wadanna annahu firaq they know certainly that they die this raqi you bring for him to come read the quran on him it's not going to benefit him when it's his time to go Halas, when it's time to go, it's time to go. The best doctor that you take him to or you take her to, when it's time to go and die, this doctor over here cannot do nothing for you. People run to high places, they go to Germany. They go to Germany for, for, for medication. When it's your time to go, the doctor over here is not going to help you. Doctor over here. Death is painful. Death is painful and it's a reality. And everybody will go through this death over here. And the one who... who, who watches their sins and who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they ponder about this death over here but the one who is negligent and is an open sinner and is consistently sinning they don't want to talk about death when you're with them and someone brings up moat and brings up death they say, what is this person talking about this person over here he's, he's killing the moat or some of the youngers will say he's killing the buzz he's killing the buzz over here don't bring this person around us this person over here is making the environment not good why because they want to continue living in that delusion they want to continue living in that fake life continue upon that sin they don't want to talk about death they don't want to talk about death wajaat sakratu al-mawt bil-haqq and the intoxication of death the pain of death then it will bring the truth wa dhalika ma kunta minhu tahid and that is verily what the individual avoids وَذَٰلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحْرِيمٌ And that is verily what the individual avoids. That is verily what the individual avoids. So the one who stays away from these sins and who's close to Allah, they will ponder over this over here. And the people of before, وَهَبِ بِنُ مُنَبِّهِ Then he used to say, الْمَوْتُ أَشَبْتُ مِنْ بَرْبٍ بِسَيْفِ That death is more painful than getting hit and struck with a sword. Death is more painful than getting hit and struck with a sword. And when the human beings, they die and they leave, then they're going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow them to come back to this dunya to do certain things. Are they going to ask Allah to allow them to come and continue in that sin? Are they going to ask them Allah to allow them to come and buy the house or buy the car or get married? No, they're not. They're going to say, فَأَسَدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ So that I could go and give the charity and I could become from that. Shahid al-Salihin, Salihin. Shahid, the part we're talking about is that they could become from the Salihin, the righteous ones. Because they were in a state in this dunya of ghafla. Ghafla, heedlessness. Heedlessness, they were not worried about Allah and His boundaries and His religion. They were continuing in that state. And when the death came to them, they're going to ask to come back to the world not to buy a house, not to continue in the sin. فَأَصَدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ They're going to ask to come back so that I could give them sadaqah, the charity. I could help them in sajid. I could help the talal al I could help the people who are poor, the orphans, and the widows, and so on. And that I could become amongst the salihin. I could become amongst the righteous ones. And that's how 
the individual, or that's why it's important for the individual when we are above the soil. We're above the soil to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly and to do our best to stay away from a dhunub, to stay away from sins, whether they are big sins and whether they are minor sins. And we don't belittle them. We don't say the sin is little. We don't say the sin is little. Rather, we look and we see the one that we are disobeying. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we stop. We stop. And we try to come to majalis that are khair and majalis that are good. And with that, we conclude with this over here. And i like to thank my noble brothers who hosted us over here and who hosted this conference over here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it on their good scales of good deeds. Our brother Sheikh Muhammad Hassan who brought us over here and who organized this conference. Likewise with my brother Ismail Abdullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them from all evils who organize this. Likewise, you noble brothers and sisters who came out, who've been here since five o'clock, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you guys. And wallahi, I'm truly humbled, humbled to be amongst you guys and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us the way we're united here, to unite us in Jannah al Firdaus. وَهَذَا وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى نَبِيْنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ بارك الله فيكم قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم